One of Holmes' strangest cases took 20 years to unfold. It all began on the moon. Beautiful. It takes my breath away just looking at it. If the oxygen generator breaks down, it'll really take your breath away. For good. Come on, you can wax poetic later. We've got work to do. You filed the papers like I told you? Uh, no. Uh, there was a power failure in Galileo City and... What do you mean, no? I told you I wanted them filed today. You trying to pull something on me, Shalto? Uh, no, uh, no. Cool it, Morstan. All the offices were closed because of the outage. I'll go later. Make sure you do. We're sitting on a fortune here. Don't worry, I'll... Moonquake! Come on! No, it's too dangerous! Stay then, I'm getting out of here. <gasps> no! <clears throat> Morstan! Are you all right? <clears throat> I'll get help! A young lady came to Holmes and me. She found herself in most peculiar circumstances. And you know Holmes. He simply could not resist getting involved. This case already presents an interesting challenge, Watson. I say, Holmes, this is too much. How do you know the young lady's not selling vacuum cleaners or some such? Eyes and brains, sir. Eyes and brains. First, look how worried she is. There is some sort of mystery in her life, but it is not a matter for the police. Otherwise, she would be there, not here. Second, observe her luggage. Brand new and not much of it. She is undertaking a short journey, which may be the source of her concern. Third, her new clothing and ring. Difficult to afford such luxurious items selling vacuum cleaners. Well, what are you waiting for? Ask her in. Offer her some tea. Yes, of course. Now, where is it? Miss Morstan, may I present Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Thank you for seeing me on such short notice, Mr. Holmes. I hope to hire you. I'll pay whatever fee you ask. Within reason, of course. That will not be necessary, Miss Morstan. This is one case I will take for the sheer pleasure of it. Watson, I've eliminated the impossible and the improbable, and I can still not deduce where, amongst my notes, you have hidden my lunar passport. I must find it. We are accompanying Miss Morstan to the moon. How did you know? I've told no one. Ah, here it is. That is my job, Miss Morstan, to know what others do not. How do I do it? Simple, really. I deduced you were going to the moon because you are wearing these lunar striders. Shoes which are heavily weighted to give you stability in the low lunar gravity, but cause no end of discomfort while on Earth and cannot help but make noise whenever you walk. And not to mention the fact that there is a lunar shuttle ticket protruding from your bag. Finally, I deduced that you needed my help from the very fact that you came here to Baker Street. Call a hover cab, Watson. We have a shuttle to catch. 
The lunar shuttle port, my good man, and with haste. If I am to help you, Miss Morstan, I must know everything. Why don't you start at the beginning? Okay, but there's not really much to tell. I'm an orphan. My mother died in childbirth. My father traveled to the moon before I was born. He went missing and was never heard from again. A few days ago, I received an envelope containing this ring. With it was this mysterious letter from someone named Thad Shalto. He said, You've been done a great wrong, Miss Morstan. I will explain everything when we meet in person. He asked me to come to the moon. He even included a lunar shuttle ticket. And he said if I felt nervous about going alone, I should bring someone I trusted. So I came to you, Mr. Holmes. You did the right thing, Miss Morstan. Most interesting, the letter was mailed in New London. Hmm, this leads me to believe that the man who sent it is the same man who followed us to the shuttle port. Huh? Hmm? You two proceed to the windows and have a look. I shall be along shortly. So this Shalto fellow said he would meet you here? Yes. He said to wear this ring. Mr. Thad Shalto, I presume? Uh, yes. And you are? Sherlock Holmes. At your service. Pardon me, but one cannot be too careful. What was in that envelope you sent Miss Morstan? A Copernican ring, a shuttle ticket, and a letter. Why do you ask? Just making sure you are the same man who sent the letter. Come. Miss Morstan is most anxious to hear what you have to say about all this. I came to Earth to make sure you would receive the Copernican ring without any problems, Miss Morstan. Which is why the package was mailed in New London, I presume. Now you will learn what all the mystery is about. The story I'm going to tell you may seem unbelievable, but I swear every word is true. Twenty years ago, my father became partners with a miner named Morstan. My... my father? Yes, your father. No, 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 no. But they never got around to filing the partnership papers. And then it was too late. The mine collapsed in a lunar quake. Don't leave me down here! I'll come back for you, Morstan! I promise! And your father was lost. I knew there was a reason why he never came back for me. My father abandoned the mine. After he passed on, my brother and I inherited the property. When we started to clear out the rubble, we found a small fortune in Copernicans which my father had hidden. And we found this, the original partnership papers, in which Morstan bequeathed his share of the mine to the daughter he'd left behind on Earth. Well, since the papers were never filed, there is no legal obligation. However, even though my own brother does not agree with me, I feel we have a moral obligation to you. So I brought you to the moon to claim your inheritance. The treasure and gems are father's mind, but never sold. They are, by all rights, half yours. Thank you, Thad. You were right. It is an unbelievable story. And not over yet. Please, Mr. Shalto, tell us about your brother. Edward? He is... well, greedy. He wants everything for himself. If I weren't his brother, he'd probably try to cut me out, too. It's... incredible. And here we are. Home sweet home. Excuse the mess. My brother is usually a better housekeeper. He must be avoiding us. I'll go talk to him. Make yourselves comfortable. Are you familiar with Lunar Survival Basics? I am, sir. But Miss Morstan... This is my first trip. Well, the only thing you really need to know about are the air pods, those things that look like coffins over there. In case of a sudden air loss from a meteorite strike or whatever, all you have to do is climb inside and you'll be perfectly safe. I'll be right back. Hmm. Well, Miss Morstan, it's been an exciting day. I fear that it is not nearly over, however. I have a feeling something is quite amiss here. I feel it too. What do you think is going on, Mr. Holmes? I'm not sure yet, Miss Morstan. We can only wait and let the story unfold as it will. I have my suspicions, Holmes. This mysterious Edward is up to no good. Mark my words. 
Give it back or I'll blast you! I'm warning you! We must do something! What are you doing? Oh, oh no! To the airlock! Mr. Holmes! Take my hand. Yeah! Ah! The coffee table, Watson! Block the hole with it! Brilliant, Holmes! Get us to the airlock, Watson! Hold on! You must suit up! The oxygen generators will automatically shut down as the pressure drops. Stay here, Miss Watson. Watson and I will look upstairs. I imagine this would be Thad's brother, Edward. See what your med scan picks up. The data shows he's in suspended animation, induced by the activation of the emergency air pod. These must be the older models. The newer ones don't put you out automatically. Uh, then he shall keep. My brother attacked me. He took the gems. I tried to stop him. He's losing consciousness. Vital sign sinking. He's going into suspended animation. But I don't think he's in any danger of cardiac arrest. But in imminent danger of another kind of arrest. Inspector Fairley of the Lunar Police. Stand aside, please. Good heavens! I believe the atmosphere is now present. Along with the local constabulary. Most observant of you, Watson. Allow me to introduce myself, Inspector Fairley. I am... I know who you are, but you have no authority up here. We can solve our own cases, thank you. Take him to the hospital for revivification along with his brother, but keep him under armed guard. Wait! Young Thad did nothing. It was his brother Edward behind it all. His brother, who is unconscious in an air pod and cannot defend himself? His brother, who called us fearing for his life? Really? What do you mean, fearing for his life? We are the ones who were almost sucked into the vacuum of space. Listen for yourself. This is an emergency. My life is in danger. My brother's outside. He's trying to steal my gems and get rid of me. You have to help me. Please remain on the line. An operator will assist. We may be provincial here on the moon, but we try not to overlook the obvious. Have a nice trip back to Earth, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, and give my regards to New Scotland Yard. You can't let them do this, Holmes. Fret not, Watson. That recording proves nothing. Come, we must examine the real evidence. Starting here, this remote control device was apparently not obvious enough for Inspector Fairley. Watson, please perform a complete analysis. Scan for any DNA residue and see if you can discern what functions it controls, if any. Ah, there is DNA present, but its identifying pattern is not present in any of the New Scotland Yard's current databases. It most certainly did not come from Thad Shalto or his brother. As for the remote function, whatever device it controlled no longer responds. I believe it is an older model control, originally used in mining endeavors. Thank you, Watson. Most enlightening. The police took Thad. I tried to stop them, but they wouldn't listen. Hmm, little has changed in the last 300 years, I'm afraid. Don't worry, our friend Thad will soon be free. Excuse me. What is he doing? Detecting Miss Morstan, or as he would say, using his eyes and brains. Watson, what do you make of this? I say, it's as if the ionizer blast came from outside the window. But that's impossible. The window material is melted on the outside edge, but jagged and broken on the inside edge. And there are traces of lunite, a commercial mining explosive commonly used in airless environments. Most observant. Come with me. I believe the answer to this conundrum lies in the mine, not here. Is this where my father was lost? Yes. Watson, this area would not have been affected by the explosion in the living quarters. Scan the area for any recent traces of lunite residue. I believe it will lead us to the answers we seek. Interesting. There are traces of lunite residue on and around the spacesuit, but nowhere else. 
However, my scanners detect something far more intriguing. A biological life form hiding behind this air grate. Stop! We're coming after you! Hold on, Watson. Let me see. Oh, Holmes, you make things so complicated sometimes. You go left, I'll go right. Just be careful. That is exactly what I am doing. Observe. There are footprints made by dust from the cavern which lead to the right, yet none lead to the left. Odd, don't you think? Not at all. There's only one of him, Holmes. How can he be in two places at once? Misdirection, Watson. Look, the left side has been swept clean. So that is the way we shall go. I don't understand. The man sweeps the floor once in the while. All the more reason to follow the footprints. Exactly what he wants us to do. Hand me that shovel. A trap! Eyes and brains, Watson. Follow me. We're cut off, Holmes! Not necessarily. Our quarry got across, and so shall we. Hold on tightly, Miss Morstan. We are about to make a great leap of faith. Give us a push, Watson. Ready? Steady? Go, Watson. Watson! When we get back to Earth, I'm making an appointment with a body shop. You'll have earned it, but it is not over yet. Stay back, Miss Morstan. Get back! Give it up, man. We are not going away. My temper is as frayed as the rest of me, sir, so I suggest you... I said get back! Don't shoot, Watson. You might hit Miss Morstan. My aim is impeccable, Holmes. I repeat, do not hurt Miss Morstan. Miss Morstan? My daughter? Father, you're alive! <sighs> New Scotland Yard insisted I bring the lads back here, Holmes. Inspector Lestrade assures me you have solved the mystery. I am convinced Thad is the guilty party, but I am willing to hear your case against Edward. What if neither is the culprit? What are you talking about? It couldn't be. Thad set me up. He's trying to get my share. There's a lot of money at stake, you know? You liar, Edward! He's just greedy. He wants it all. Quiet! One of you is criminally responsible for this mess, and I'm going to find out whom. Who, Inspector? Who? Gentlemen, may I introduce the original owner of this Copernican mine, Mr. Philip Morstan. Huh? What? I know this comes as a bit of a shock, so please keep an open mind while I recreate the exact sequence of events for you. Our story begins 20 years ago with the cave-in in which Morstan was presumed lost. He in fact survived, held in suspended animation inside an emergency air pod for the entire time. Finally, the power supply gave out. Morstan was released from his 20-year slumber, and like Rip Van Winkle, he awoke to find the world had changed around him. Morstan overheard Edward and Thad arguing over their father's Copernicans. He had no way of knowing they were arguing over whether to give some of the gems to his daughter. Morstan felt the gems were rightfully his, and came up with a plan to get them back. Just before Thad was to return, Edward Shalto was startled to see someone in a spacesuit lurking outside the window. Who else could it be but his brother? But it was Morstan, booby-trapping one of the windows with a remote-controlled explosive charge of Lunite. Thinking it was his brother come back to ambush him, Edward did not notice that he had spilled his soft drink in his haste. He locked the door to buy himself some time and ran upstairs to call for help. Morstan got in through the air shaft system. He overpowered Edward and forced him into the emergency air pod, which put him into suspended animation. While Morstan was searching for the Copernicans, Thad arrived with the rest of us. Morstan was not expecting anyone and had his spacesuit audio off, so he did not hear us. Thad went looking for Edward and discovered the intruder. Thad thought Morstan was his brother. He grabbed the ionizer to subdue him and it accidentally went off. Thad was winning and Morstan was desperate, not realizing there was anyone else downstairs. He detonated the Lunite explosive, causing the decompression that forced Thad to retreat into the emergency airport. 
While Miss Morstan and I were fighting for our lives, Morstan retreated through the airshaft system to the security of his secret lair in the mine, never knowing anyone else was there. There, in the airshaft system, we later chased him down and brought this 20-year-old mystery to an end. You're alive! You spin quite a tale, Mr. Holmes. But you are wrong. Explosives? What explosives? One of these bickering delinquents shot out the window with an ionizer gun. One of them was trying to do away with the rest of you. It's obvious. It's impossible. The broken window was melted on the outside edge by the heat of the Lunite explosion. If the ionizer blast were the cause, the melting would have occurred on the inside edge. You two owe each other an apology, I think. There's no villainy in this story, only misunderstanding. Sorry, Inspector, but Thad and Edward Shalto are guilty of nothing more than a bad case of sibling rivalry. Just one thing, Mr. Holmes. How did you know that Morstan was still alive after all these years? I didn't. But who else knew there was a treasure hidden here? Who else had opportunity, motive, and inside access? When you've eliminated the impossible, whatever is left, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. You must think we're a little slow up here on the moon. No more or less than anyone else in this room, sir. We all have eyes and we all have brains. It is how we use them that counts, and how we shall use them in the years to come. <laughs>